got this up to a 320 grit finish on all edges. And I'm gonna try and clean up this middle area up to a 15 micron, which is six, 600 grit. Um, with this small wheel here, so it makes it a little bit easier for me to hand sand. And I may also try to get this under, uh, this underside right here with 15 micron also. It's kind of difficult to grind this inwards curve with this type of belt because it's so thin. Um, if you make knives yourself and you use quite a few different belts, you know that every belt has a different, every type of belt has a different thickness, kind of cushion to it. And these really high grit belts are thin, they're like paper. When you're grinding, you're flat grinding on the edge of the belt, it just it chatters and it doesn't make a nice finish. You can't really grind a recurve on the edge of a flat flat with a really high grit belt. So I'm gonna have to do more hand finishing on this top bevel than I will on the rest of the knife. I have got everything up to a either 600 grit or 320 grit finish across the whole thing depending on the the area of the knife it's either 600 or 320 and I'm, I'm basically done with the grinder work now but I've got to hold off on the hand sanding I've got to be patient and I have to wait to etch this it's really hard I really want to etch this thing and see what it looks like but the uh, special thing that I've got planned for this knife next is some inlays so I want to inlay three pieces of woolly mammoth ivory into the steel bolster and spine of this knife. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drill three holes that are different sizes and put round um, pieces, round rods of woolly mammoth down the spine because I'm gonna have fossilized ivory on the handle as well, so that'll match. It'll be a nice detail. They'll be rounded and domed over. It'll just be really cool. I think it'll be a nice touch. So let's go ahead and do that. Now that it's time to drill the holes in the top of this bolster, I need to lay out uh, exactly where they're going, describe some lines, and prepare all of that for the drilling, because this is really, this this could really like completely screw up the knife, I'm not gonna lie. This is, if I drill the hole off center, then I don't know how to fix that. So, it has to be perfect the first time around. You nervous then? I'm very nervous, Jacob. Thank you for asking. I hope this is right. Each of these marks is the center of the pin. So I did a quarter inch. From this mark, this is a quarter inch pin. I did half of a quarter inch, 125 thousandths, plus 135 thousandths, which is the distance that I'm leaving in between each pin. And then I did half of 3 sixteenths of an inch to find the center of that. And then for this one, I did half of 3 sixteenths plus 135 thousandths plus half of 1 eighth. So. That should put each pin 135 thousandths from each other, I hope. Could you really help me? Could you just hold this, Jacob? Thank you. Look how, look how cool this is. I can't mess this up. This is really intense. 
This is more intense than Forged in Fire. I think that's it. I hope. We start off really slow. Wow, that's not what the drill bit's walking all over the place. It's going to be hard to start now that it's all jacked up on the side. Ah, oh, God. It's just not... I don't know what to do. It just doesn't have to be deep for this inlay either. It also doesn't hurt to go a little bit deeper than I need. But I'm just drilling into a solid steel bolster. That's an unnerving sound. It's not a good noise. But I think it's it's doing really good, so. Oh my gosh, that's nerve wracking. Let's move on to the next hole. And it'll get easier as we get down to a smaller hole. Going much smoother than the first one. Yeah, I don't know what I was thinking. Thinking that I could just go in there from the start with a quarter inch bit into hardened steel on this small of a machine. It's too much chatter. Why is that not centered? It's hair. The hair off, man. The hair is too much. The hair is four thousandths of an inch, to be exact. That's it. Time to drill again. I think it's good. I think so too. This is it. I don't know much about machining, but I'm thinking maybe if I start slower it'll help. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody's like, no! I already know that I'm gonna get chewed out in the comments about all the internet by all the internet machinists, so I'm not. I'm not concerned about how bad I am at this. Ah! Get it, Jacob. Get it. Get it. He's dead. I didn't mean kill it. You evil, evil person. Uh, you remember when you killed that hornet? Here we go. Full speed. I think it just went off center. 
What? You're kidding. No. Okay, I'm learning from my mistakes. I now know that I should chuck it up really high so it's not flexible and it doesn't want to walk. Oh, the internet people are going to love this. What do you know? It worked. Here's what I'm going to do. I have a hole here that's 3.30 seconds. I want the hole to be about an eighth of an inch. But when I first started the hole, it wobbled, and at the very top, maybe just a few thousandths deep, there's a little weird thing. I don't know if that's going to be an issue or not. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an eighth inch carbide drill bit. I'm going to drill it out and see how much gap there is on the top. If there's still a little bit more gap than I'm comfortable with, I'm going to go in with a number 29 drill bit, which is 135 thousandths. It's 10 thousandths larger in diameter than an eighth inch bit. It aesthetically on our pin, um, our pin pattern here, it won't look any different than what I had planned, but it might be enough to actually take out that crater that's on the top. So I'm going to start with an eighth of an inch. And then if I need to use the number 29 drill bit, I will. Well, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I don't know that I need to use that number, 120, or number 29 bit. I think that's good. Once I round out the spine, it'll take away any weird stuff. Oh, God. We did it. So, um, after I took it out of the vise, I looked at it and I um, decided that it would look better if it had four holes. So, because I hate myself, I'm going to drill a fourth hole. Um, I went ahead and drilled that eighth inch hole to a number 29 hole, so it's slightly bigger. And I'm going to drill the fourth hole at 3.30 seconds, which is like 93 thousandths, I think. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so I've got that fourth hole drilled in the spine here. And um, I will fill those up with domed mammoth ivory pins and it will match the walrus ivory that's going to be on the uh, actual handle material there. So the next step in this process is to cut the shoulder on this tang section here so that the handle material can fit up nice and flush against that and then begin the hand sanding terrible terrible hand sanding but I don't think it's going to take too long on this piece since it's, it's kind of small and and uh, I think I did a fairly decent job on the grinder so it will save me a little bit of time with hand sanding and get me a little bit closer to seeing that Damascus pattern so I hope that you enjoyed this video and learned something from it I know that I learned a lot about drilling holes that was a nightmare um, <laughs> so I hope that you stick around to the next part in this video series on making this Persian dagger. And if you did enjoy this video, please let us know in the comments below and be sure to share with your friends. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next video.